The spouses, Robert and Jacqueline Taylor, were well-to-do people. They moved to the bustling capital, feeling that the successful restaurant business became too big for the provinces. Here, the Taylors quickly acquired the necessary business connections and bought an excellent house in the suburbs. Their daughter Melanie got a job in a prestigious company. The parents were proud that their daughter, unlike the children of their rich friends, could provide for herself and was quite an independent person. The only thing that upset the couple was Melanie's reluctance to get married. She dreamed of building a career and did not want to become a housewife. Especially the smart and promising employee had long been noticed in the company and predicted a great future. One evening, the whole family gathered around the table to discuss a festive dinner to celebrate Melanie's 25th birthday. The girl would like to spend the holiday in a close family circle at home, but her parents had very different plans. Jacqueline cautiously suggested, Daughter, why don't we invite guests? Please, no guests, Mum. I really would like to be with you. Aren't you tired of your own restaurants? objected the daughter. My dear, your father and I wanted to tell you that it has already been decided. We have invited the Powells to dinner, and their son Adam will come too. Melanie frowned. So, do you mean that it would not be a birthday party, but a matchmaking? Melanie's father stepped into the conversation. Adam's a great guy, and his parents are our partners. They're wonderful and reliable people. But the girl resented it. Daddy, I'm not a commodity or a bargaining chip in your dealings, and I'm not going to dance to your tune. Her father, getting furious, slammed his fist on the table. But I think it's the best idea to marry Adam Powell, and that's it. There was a silence in the room. A minute later, Melanie looked her father in the eye and said firmly, If it's that important to you to marry me off quickly, then I'll marry the first man I meet tomorrow. The girl dryly thanked her mother for dinner and left. She went upstairs to her room and locked the door. Melanie's soul was seething with anger and injustice. She lay down on her bed, but could not sleep for a long time, thinking over her situation. She was very hurt. It is the 21st century, but her parents are going to sell her as an expensive commodity without asking her opinion. Weighing the pros and cons, Melanie decided to leave home and rent an apartment near her office. She was able to pay her rent. Okay, dear mum and dad, I'll throw you a party tomorrow. Melanie fell asleep with these thoughts. Early in the morning, she sneaked out of the house onto a quiet street. Not far away, a cab was waiting for her. Usually, Melanie's father drove her to town. He thought that women shouldn't drive. Getting from the suburbs to the city, Melanie decided to take the subway to the centre so she wouldn't have to wait in the endless traffic jams of the big city. In the subway, the girl was confused. She had never been here before and did not know what to do. Finally, she managed to find the necessary stations, then she headed for the escalator. Not used to it, she couldn't keep her footing on the stairs and almost fell down. But luckily for her, she was caught by a young man. Melanie looked at the stranger. An old jacket, jeans, apparently bought at some cheap sale and shabby sneakers. Melanie looked at the stranger. His appearance suggested that the man was an ordinary blue-collar worker, but the smart grey eyes, open and the white-toothed smile, was appealing, trustworthy. Thank you, said Melanie. Looks like I had a bad day since this morning. That's all right, replied the man. My name is Clark, and yours? Melanie. Clark smiled. Beautiful name. And you yourself are beautiful. Perhaps it would be impudent of me to ask for your phone number, he muttered shyly. Melanie, without thinking, dictated the numbers to her new acquaintance. Then she got out of the subway, and Clark was looking after this beautiful girl, so unlike the usual visitors of the subway. At the office, Melanie was waited for by a mountain of reports, documents, plans, and meter-long stacks of business papers. She was absorbed in her work, not noticing how the time flew by. 
At midday, Melanie was sitting in a small cafe on a street corner drinking coffee. Suddenly, her phone rang, and a text message came in. The girl saw that it was a message from Clark. Hi, I'm afraid to sound immodest again, but I would like to invite you to the movies. Melanie smiled. She wasn't particularly interested in such suitors, but suddenly an interesting thought popped into her head. The girl quickly called Clark. I'd love to, but I can't. My family is waiting for me at home. It's my birthday. Great, congratulations. Thanks, but I'm not really in the mood for fun. Why not? wondered Clark. My parents are marrying me off to a man I don't know, and I don't want to know. Honestly, my father just wants to be kindred with his partner. Is there anything I can do to help? asked Clark. You could, if you don't be offended, replied Melanie, and told Clark about her plans for the evening. The man listened to her carefully and agreed. A few hours later, Melanie came home a little late for the festive dinner. The girl politely apologized to her parents and guests and went to her room to change. Ten minutes later, Melanie came down in a chic evening gown that fit her slender figure. An expensive necklace shone on the birthday girl's neck. Her father introduced his daughter to the Powell couple and their son. Adam was unattractive and distinguished by a plump physique. During the introduction to the girl, he did not even think of getting up from the table, sprawled in an armchair with a cigarette in his mouth. Everyone present pretended that nothing terrible had happened. The dinner was holding in a strange atmosphere. Mr. and Mrs. Powell seemed like nice and well-mannered people. They praised the exquisite dishes and the skill of Melanie's mother. Jacqueline blossomed from the compliments and was very pleased with herself, while her daughter, on the contrary, became more and more irritated by every minute. Adam turned out to be a heavy drinker. He constantly poured wine into the glass, so he got drunk quickly. The intended groom made silly jokes and laughed loudly, interrupting his parents. Suddenly the bell rang, and Mr. Taylor raised an eyebrow in surprise. Who could that be? You'll see, said Melanie, and ran to open the door. On the threshold stood Clark. He was dressed up in a modest suit, and in his hands he held a huge bouquet of red roses. Happy birthday, beauty. Won't you show your fiancé to your parents? Melanie laughed and winked slyly at Clark. Of course, honey. Mum and Dad are getting impatient, she joked. Entering the living room, Melanie introduced Clark. Meet my fiancé, Clark. After coping with his amazement and anger, Melanie's father managed to pull a mask of coldness over his face. Clark, what do you do? Maybe you're a businessman or Melanie's colleague? Adam laughed loudly. His parents, on the other hand, were insultingly silent. Clark smiled friendly, pulled back a chair, inviting Melanie to sit down, and only then sat down in his seat. He himself was polite and gave witty answers to Melanie's father's caustic questions. Melanie noticed the way Clark skillfully used cutlery, as if he had been attending gourmet dinners all his life. Against the background of Clark's behaviour, Adam's antics looked ridiculous and sometimes even disgusting. The Powells, realising that their own son had disgraced them and looked like a drunken pig in comparison with Clark, demonstratively left the tailor's house. Melanie's father threw angry glances at Clark, and the girl was seriously afraid for the young man. She knew what her father was like when he was angry. She signalled to Clark that it was time to leave, and he began to say goodbye, thanking the hosts for the wonderful dinner. Melanie walked him to the door. Thank you, she said with all her heart. Clark looked at her strangely, then suddenly leaned over and kissed her on the cheek. I'll wait for you tomorrow evening to go to the movies. Where do you work? Melanie named the company, and Clark was very surprised. Wow, that's a cool company. 
The girl smiled back. It doesn't matter. I hope you wouldn't have any complexes about that information. Clark laughed. I don't have any complexes at all, in case you haven't noticed. When the man left, Melanie faced her father's wrath. He yelled, stomped his feet, and threatened to lock his own daughter in her room. I know you did this to spite me. You brought some ragamuffin into my house, embarrassed me and your mother in front of our guests. So I don't want to see this Clark ever. Here, Melanie became angry too. The so-called ragamuffin acted like a decent human being, and your Adam turned out to be a complete alcoholic. Father, do you really dream of breaking my life? Mr. Taylor fell silent, and he went to his office without saying a word. Once in his study, he pulled his tie off his neck and unbuttoned his shirt collar. Jacqueline hurried after him, looking at her husband in horror. Are you feeling ill? You need to take your medicine right away. Robert shook his head negatively. No need. Melanie really is right. I almost ruined my only daughter's life. And for what? For restaurants. I acted like a monster. Jacqueline hugged her husband and whispered softly. Leave her alone, honey. She's a grown girl. Let her do as she wants. The next day, Melanie left home early again. This time, she navigated the subway well and arrived at the office early. In the lobby, the girl saw her boss, the influential businessman, Mr. Wilson. He stared at his employee in surprise. Melanie, I do not understand why you came earlier than everyone else. You're a young girl, not an old maid, who has nothing to do at home. Melanie laughed merrily. Mr. Wilson, a hundred years ago I would have been considered a hardened old maid. But nowadays it is possible to be unmarried and not be afraid of people's judgment. No big deal. I'll make up for it by the time I'm forty. Okay, well, since you're here before everyone else, let me invite you into my office to discuss some things about statistics. Melanie and the boss went headlong into the analysis of the reports. The time flew by quickly. The girl was satisfied because her boss praised her for her creative approach to business and promised to promote her. Clark called in the evening and suggested a walk through the old part of the city. You're new here, so you probably don't know at all what interesting sights we have. Clark turned out to be a great storyteller, and Melanie did not notice how they ended up in a quiet courtyard. Clark looked intently into Melanie's eyes. Do you believe in fate and love at first sight? He asked. From now on, yes, replied the girl simply, and Clark hugged her tightly and kissed her. Then he took Melanie's hand and led her down a shadowy alley. After passing through a wrought iron fence, they came to a beautiful mansion. Is it one more museum? asked Melanie. Clark laughed and replying that it was his father's house, opened the door for the astonished girl. In the huge living room, in front of the fireplace, a tall man was sitting with his back, turned to the lovers. Dad, let me introduce you to my fiancé, said Clark and the man turned around. Melanie became speechless. Clark's father turned out to be her boss, Mr. Wilson. As it turned out later, Mr. Wilson, as Melanie's father, also wanted to marry his son to the business partner's daughter. Clark did not want such a wedding and left home, found a job, and saved up all the money to start his own business. Falling in love at first sight with Melanie, he decided to help her, and when he found out where she was working, he was struck by the fantastic intertwining of the threads of their fate. Sometime later, Melanie's parents met Clark's parents and saw who the poor ragamuffin really was. They did not know where to hide from shame, but Clark was a born diplomat and did not hold a grudge against them. Finally, all the parents accepted their mistakes and were happy that their children had found happiness.